Looking at its core, the Windows desktop. Suzanne, when Windows 95 opens on your computer, you might notice similarities and differences from your previous Windows screen. If you have used Windows before, you're already familiar with the desktop metaphor. The screen is meant to resemble a desk with folders on it that represent various tasks. Suzanne's desktop is essentially empty since she hasn't any open windows on screen. Her desktop is very simple. It has three icons and the new taskbar. Viewers, your screen may differ from Suzanne's due to the type of install you chose and the work that has been done since that installation. Although Suzanne's system has been used since Windows 95 was installed on her machine, it still has the default display and system settings. We'll use these as the base for our operations. The icons here are different from what we saw in earlier versions of Windows. There is no program manager or any group icons. Wait a second, Professor. If there's no program manager, how do I start my programs? Those duties are now handled by the Taskbar Start button, which is located at the lower left of the screen. We'll look at that in a moment, but first, let's begin our investigation of the desktop by looking at the My Computer icon. This icon represents your computer. Double-click on it, Suzanne. Within the My Computer window, we can quickly and easily see everything on our computer. It contains information about all the system components and all the storage locations on our computer, including the folders and files in these locations. Professor, this window looks a little different than earlier windows. Does it work the same? You're right, Suzanne. It does look a little different, but it functions basically the same as those earlier windows. Let's review the parts of a window and see what's new. First of all, an application window has six basic elements. The caption, menu and status bars, borders, an area for contents, and at times, scroll bars. The caption is the top bar of the window. In earlier versions, this section of a window was called the title bar. It shows the name of the open window, my computer in this case. To the left of the title is a small computer image. This is the control icon. Click on the icon with your left mouse button. This control menu gives the familiar commands for changing the size of a window. Restore, move, minimize, maximize, and close. These commands can be accessed with the mouse or the keyboard. Suzanne, press your escape key or just click the mouse in the caption bar to close the control menu. On the right side of the window caption are three buttons, an underline, a square, and an X. Although these symbols are new, you should be familiar with the actions of the first two. The underline is your minimize button. Click that button, Suzanne. The minimize command makes the window disappear but leaves the program active. Suzanne, do you see the My Computer button on the taskbar at the bottom of the screen? That shows us that the window is still active, but not currently open on the desktop. Click the My Computer button, Suzanne. The window is reopened. Now click on the square button on the caption, Suzanne. This is the Maximize button. It enlarges your window to fill all the space available on your monitor. When the window is maximized, that button changes to show two little squares. This is called the Restore button. And a click of that button returns the window to its previous size. The last button on the caption is the X, which is a close button. It closes the window and the program running in it. Click on that button, Suzanne. Since the program is closed, we no longer see it listed on the taskbar below. Experienced Windows users may notice that an icon means something a little different here than it used to. A minimized window does not show up as an icon on the desktop. It appears on the taskbar with the other active programs. Any icons that appear on the desktop represent inactive programs, available but not currently open and running on the system. Suzanne, click with your right mouse button on My Computer. This brings up a shortcut menu. The top menu command now is Open. Click on that choice to open the window again. We can open a window by double-clicking on it or by using this shortcut menu. Now, let's finish going over the caption. The caption is the place to point when you want to drag a window to a different location. Point to the caption, any place except on one of the buttons, Suzanne, and click and hold your mouse button. Now drag the mouse around. As you do, notice that the window moves in the same direction as your mouse. 
When you release the mouse button, the window is dropped in a new location. This is one example of drag and drop control. We'll see another when we copy some files later in the lesson. Besides moving the window to a new location on the desktop, we can also resize the window in order to see more of the contents area. Suzanne, move your mouse pointer to the right edge of the window until you see the resizing arrow. Now click and drag your mouse to the left to make this window narrower. Now click and drag the right border to the far right side of the desktop. There, we've made the window wider. We can use the same method to resize the window vertically. Below the window caption is the menu bar. The pull-down menus on this bar allow us to access all the commands available to this program. They operate just as they had before. A single click will pull down a menu. Or pressing the Alt key and the underscored letter in a menu name will open that menu. Clicking outside the menu or pressing the Escape key will close it. Menus in Windows and Windows compatible applications are standardized so you can anticipate where to look for common types of commands. You'll always find the File menu in the leftmost menu position and Help in the rightmost position. We'll look a little closer at the menu bar in just a moment. Underneath the menu bar is the Contents area. Within this area, we can see icons for disk drives and folders. These icons allow us to access any drive, folder, or file within this window. The number and type of icons that appear in the contents area depends on what type of application window is opened. At the bottom of the window is the status bar. It displays helpful messages about selected menu commands and the objects within the contents area. Right now it's telling us that there are 10 objects within this window. Other information will show up in the status bar, so remind yourself to check this space periodically. Also, on the right side of this window, we have the standard window scroll bar, indicating there may be more information in this window that we can't currently see. In some windows, you will see a vertical and a horizontal scroll bar. These scroll bars work just as they did in earlier Windows applications. Now, let's see what kind of options we have on the menu bar. Open the View menu, Suzanne. This menu also has some codes that we should recognize. The last command, Options, has an ellipsis, which means that a dialog box will open for more information. The top two commands, Toolbar and Status Bar, are checkoff options. A check mark next to an option indicates that option is active. A click will remove the check mark and make that option inactive. Suzanne, let's add a toolbar to this window. Click on the option name. Now, there's a new feature in the window, a row of icons just below the menu bar. These icons compose the toolbar. Each one represents a specific command. Although we can find these commands within the pull-down menus, it is much quicker to access these command tasks with a single click of the mouse. Suzanne, pull down the View menu again. Now click on the Details option. The Contents area changes to give us more detailed information about each icon. Suzanne is given detailed information about her hard drive and CD-ROM drive storage capabilities plus other information concerning the folders that appear in this window. Suzanne, before we finish our window tour, let's look a little closer at the control icon. Move your mouse on top of the control icon and click your right mouse button. The right button opens a different set of commands than the left mouse button. Don't click any of these commands until I finish going over them. The first is self-explanatory. Close will close this window, the same as the X button on the caption. The second opens the File Explorer, which is similar to the old File Manager. Find is also a file-related command used to find a file. We won't be covering the Map Network Drive and Disconnect Network Drive options since Suzanne's machine isn't connected to a network, but we will see how to create a shortcut later in the lesson. The Properties command at the bottom of the list is an important command to know. Click on the Properties command, Suzanne, and let's find out what properties are. The first page of this dialog box gives general information about your system, including the chip model and amount of RAM. This very useful description of your system is known as the system properties. We can see further details by using the question mark button. Click on that button using the left mouse button. When the mouse pointer changes shape, click on the line that displays your computer type. 
The help box tells us that the information we clicked on specifies your processor type and the amount of memory in your computer. Now click the right hand tab at the top of this window labeled performance. Here are further details about your system status and a place where you might find suggestions to improve performance as you add components to the system. Across the bottom of this page are buttons that will open additional dialog boxes for advanced settings such as hard drive optimization, file sharing, and other advanced topics which we'll leave alone for now. Click cancel to close the dialog box. The second icon on the desktop is your recycle bin, Suzanne. It's a temporary holding place for deleted files and is a very handy new feature since you can retrieve a deleted file from the recycle bin if you decide you really need that file. Double click the recycle bin icon. The recycle bin is a lot like a trash can. It's a place to hold stuff you want to throw away. Retrieving things from this trash can isn't as messy as a real one and a lot easier than older retrieving methods. Suzanne, your recycle bin is empty right now since you haven't thrown anything away yet. As you work with a computer and delete unneeded files, they will be held here in the recycle bin. The bin is set up to hold up to 10% of your total hard drive space. Once the bin reaches this limit, it starts to empty automatically, erasing the oldest files first. The recycle bin is a real lifesaver. It holds all deleted files, even if they were deleted accidentally. So you can retrieve them without using a lot of complicated retrieval procedures. You simply open this window, find the file, and move it back into its regular storage location. We'll see this more clearly when we look at the procedures for deleting, moving, and copying files later in this lesson. While we have two windows open, Suzanne, let's recall one more point about selecting windows. The Recycle Bin window is on top of the My Computer window right now, but you can see some of the edges of My Computer behind it. The caption on Recycle is a brighter color, indicating that it is the active window. Now click on the My Computer window, Suzanne. See how it moves in front of Recycle? This is another example of the desktop metaphor. Windows are like pieces of paper or folders that can be shuffled on top of each other according to which one you are working with at the time. Now click on the desktop. Both Windows captions go dim, indicating that neither one is currently active, even though my computer is still on top. This suggests that the Windows 95 desktop itself is an active element in this working environment. This was not the case in the past. Right-click with your pointer on the desktop, Suzanne. This pop-up menu gives us commands specific to the desktop. These commands allow us to arrange the icons in a particular order or to simply line up the icons without changing their order of appearance. Another properties command appears at the bottom of this menu giving access to the display properties on your system. We'll take a closer look at this option in a moment. Let's finish exploring the desktop first.